Welcome to the Gridiron, guys. Kerry Davis, Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm Anthony Stalter. Sorry for the, uh, I don't know, two-week hiatus or whatever it was. But Kerry and I are going to be back here, and we're going to be doing this consistently. Yes. We've got a new format, Kerry. We do. We've got different angles that we're going to take throughout the week. So we're going to be producing multiple podcasts throughout the week. They're going to be a little bit shorter. Okay. Because Kerry and I tend to, you know, when we're, like, breaking down games, you tend to break everything down. So they're going to be a little bit shorter. But each podcast is going to have a theme. So today's theme, since we're recording on a Friday, before the Sunday Week 6 games, Kerry, we're going to do a pick five. Yep. Your top five picks, whether it's against the spread, over-under, player props, and then my top five, and we'll record them, and then we'll see who, who winds up being the winner when it's all said and done. So we're starting, you know, Week 6, so... You and I both have zero points. It's not like either of us are, is at a dis, you know advantage. But right. we'll, uh, we'll we'll see how well we do when it comes to these picks. Let's go. But last night, the 49ers knocked off the Seahawks 36-24. to 24. Uh, I didn't think that that it, that was a surprise at all. I figured no. San Francisco would roll. I thought they got hosed by that that punt that, oh, that looked yeah. like it hit Seattle's yeah, it punt did. returner. It did. Looked like it hit his I, – I don't, I don't understand how you don't have an angle on that they if you're the they NFL. They didn't have enough angles. The, uh, they also they, – they, they messed themselves over as well because they had a touchdown call back because Kenneth Walker was still in motion. They had two people in motion, something that had no impact on the play. Just stop, touchdown, the game's a little bit closer. But, you know, that things happen when you are playing a better team. San Francisco is a better team. They were able to take care of business. Yeah. I also think that, that that's a game too, Kerry, that – like Geno Smith's a good bridge quarterback. Mm-hmm. Those are the games, though, when the, when things are heightened a little bit. Right. I think that's where you find out that if you're Seattle, you have a disadvantage. Yeah, you know that's a team that you're going to have to get through at some point if mm-hmm. you want to win the division. Maybe you even face them in the playoffs. Right. Geno Smith's a really good quarterback. I'm taking nothing away from him. Right. But that's when you really say, like, oh, you know what? We don't we need, have. We need that. We need one more. Yeah. We need another one. Yep. Yeah. All right. So without further ado, let's get into our Friday pick five. So All right. carry. What's your first pick? And we don't have to do this in order yeah. in terms of, like, that's my favorite pick. It's just right. these are Kerry's five, five no, best plays. In no particular order. That's right. And then my five. I'm taking the Detroit Lions minus three and a half over the Cowboys. All right. I've seen, I know Dallas went into Pittsburgh last week, got a win, got a dub. Uh, Detroit runs the football well. They have a lot of passers, pass catchers, excuse me. They have got a great passer, a lot of pass catchers. Offensively, I think that the, the Lions are – explosive as can be. They got Jamison Williams who could take the top off the coverage. Amon Ross St. Brown, you got Sam LaPorta, you got two running backs that find a way to get the ball both in the pass game and the running game and do it effectively. We've seen the Dallas Cowboys give up a lot of rushing yards versus the Ravens and versus the Saints. I think it's going to be a huge game. That three and a half is probably not even going to be close. It's going to be, in my opinion, a blowout and the Cowboys will be on the opposite side of it watching. Well, I'll tell you what. Good news for you because I've got a three, okay. so you can do Even Lions better. minus three. Yep. So Even we'll better. we'll uh, we'll we'll play this one fair. I like the Lions too. I didn't have them as as one of my top five picks, but mm-hmm. I think in that matchup when Dallas you got Dallas banged up, Steelers couldn't take advantage of it. But if they had any any passing game, it, it, you know this, Kerry, right. they probably beat Dallas Indeed. on Sunday night yep. because their defense had the two interceptions of Dak, and unfortunately just couldn't couldn't keep them out of the end zone. But the, the Steelers left a lot of yards on the table. Yep. The Lions will not. You know, yep. with Dallas being banged up up front, if that's a shootout like it was between the Saints and the Cowboys or the Ravens and the Cowboys, I think you're going to get a, a similar result. So I, I like that pick. But, again, not one of my top five. There is a pick that um, I think will get some pushback because of the way that the road team and the underdog is, is playing right now. But I got the Ravens minus six and a half. Okay. These are the games that I feel like Baltimore shells out for. Right. Remember when Detroit, we just got done talking about the Lions, but remember when Detroit went into Baltimore a year ago and the Ravens just waxed them? Yeah. You know, Detroit, good, really good team. They're, they go to Baltimore, big test, and the Ravens smacked them around. <laughs> it feels like that all over again. Yeah. Yet Washington, and, and taking nothing away, look, they're, they're what, 4-1 and one on the mm-hmm. season now, and they've got a couple of big upsets already under their under their belts. I love right. Jaden Daniels. I don't. I still don't trust the defense. Yeah. The defense ranks in the bottom third, I think, right now in both run and pass. Right. Uh, certainly the bottom five. The Ravens are rolling right now. Yes, they are. Derrick Henry has looked fantastic. Lamar, incredible game last week against Cincinnati. I know Baltimore really shaky last week defensively, but 
But I think they're going to be prepared for Jaden Daniels. I think they're going to play a lot of dime, so they're going to get an extra DB on the field to try to contain Jaden Daniels. And the other thing that Washington has done is is be balanced. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to be balanced this weekend. I think Baltimore is going to take away the run, and they're going to force Jaden Daniels to throw a bunch. And it just that's that's not their game I as of right you. now. So I got the Ravens minus six and a half. All right, my number two pick is actually that same game, but I'm going with the over because like as that. you just said, both of these defense, Cincinnati carved up Baltimore last week, but Baltimore was able to come out with the win. The Washington Commanders are struggling on the defensive side, but both of these offenses are number one and two in scoring offenses in the league. Yeah. They have great passing games, really good running game from Baltimore. Brian Robinson for, for Washington has been doing a good job and get Austin Eckler, Eckler out of the backfield. Like they are doing, they are almost mirror images of each other, both offensively and defensively. So I expect it to be a shootout. I think it is the, the over is 51 and a half and uh, give me the over. I, I don't even think it's going to be close. It's going to be way over. Baltimore will win, but the over of 51 and a half, yes. So I consider the over. I'm sticking with that same game, but I'm going to throw in a player prop. Okay. I like Jaden Daniels over 30 and a half pass attempts. Yeah. Thus far, he hasn't – He the, the most he's had in a game is 30, and that came against the Arizona Cardinals in week two. Otherwise, he only put the ball in the air 25 times last week, 32 uh, – I'm sorry, it wasn't week two, it was two weeks ago. So, th 25, 30, 23, 29, 24. That's Jaden Daniels' pass attempts. Again, I think the Ravens are going to take the, take the run away from Washington. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to force Cliff Kingsbury to put the ball in the air. Some of those attempts are obviously going to be taken away by Jaden Daniels running. But I still think that if this winds up being a shootout like you're talking yeah. about, or the Ravens pull away like I'm, <laughs> like I'm referring to, Jaden Daniels is going to have to put the ball in the air gonna a lot. throw it a lot. So, Jaden Daniels over 30 and a half pass attempts is my second play. All right, cool. Let's go to my third one. And you know I had to get my guys in here. I got to show the Pittsburgh Steelers some love. Heading out to Vegas, going to see about the Raiders at minus three. Give me the, give me the Steelers at minus three over the Raiders. The Raiders – Figuring things out at quarterback. They've made a decision to go with Aiden O'Connell. Gardner Minshew will not be the quarterback. Um, the, the receiver, Devontae Adams, is out for this game again. They've been dealing with a lot of injuries and a lot of chaos in that organization over the past few weeks, trying to figure out who's in, who's out, who wants to be here, who doesn't. Your coach says, we're guys making business decisions. I'm going to make some business decisions <laughs> as well. They seem to be in turmoil a little bit, and the Steelers feel like after that tough loss against Dallas last week, I think they'll rebound defensively. They are they get after the quarterback. Got to make some plays in the secondary, which they made a few last week, but got to make more plays in the secondary. And then you got to figure out something going offensively. You got to figure out a pass game. I don't know if Russell is going to be the answer. I don't know if Justin Fields is going to stay at the quarterback position. Maybe they do something where they give Russ a, a package where he's able to play. He's He's been healthy this week, has been practicing. So we'll see how that goes. But offensively, you got to get something going, both passing and running. But the Steelers minus three versus a team that is in turmoil in the Las Vegas Raiders. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Pittsburgh coming into town. And I guarantee you this, this is the thing that I know about the Pittsburgh Steelers and their fans. It will be more Steeler fans in attendance than there will be Raider fans, and that is not great for the Raiders. And it has a home game, so give me the Steelers minus three. Something stinks about this game. Like really? I don't know why. Why do the Steelers? Why are the Steelers only laying three points? Because they can't pass the ball and don't run the ball. The Raiders are a mess. Yeah, an absolute mess. I can see the 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 logic. Like there's no reason to back the Vegas Raiders, the, right. the Las Vegas Raiders. So you've got Devontae Adams out again. Trade rumors continue to swirl there. Antonio Pierce looks like he's in over his head now that he's he's it's it's his team. You mentioned Aiden Aiden O'Connell coming in. I just don't I, I don't know why that's that spread is so low. Yeah. I do like Mike Tomlin off a loss. I think there's there's appeal there. But you mentioned it as well with with the quarterback situation for the Steelers. I would stick with Justin Fields mm -hmm. with his limitations because I don't think Russell Wilson. I don't think Russell Wilson's going to give you anything that that, Jay, that uh, Justin Fields is not. You got to get somebody the the on time passing game, throwing on time on target. Those things have to take place. You can't be late with throws. It can't be when the guy actually breaks and he's you see him open. It has to be when he's breaking on the route and you have to throw him open. And I think Justin Fields at times struggles with that aspect. I don't know if Russell is 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 better in that part. We haven't seen it in a few years, but I think that at some point. If it's not the on-time, on-target passing game from Justin Fields, they may decide to go with 
Russell Wilson just to get that aspect of it, and then that opens up more in the run game as well. I'm going to hop over to my with my third pick. I'm going to hop over to the NFC South, Gary. I th- I thought long and hard about the box because mm-hmm. you got Spencer Radler stepping in for the injured Derek Carr, but I don't like the hook. The hook is the the half point, yeah. so it's three and a half. I don't love that. If it was t- if it was Tampa just laying the three, I'd be I'd be more apt to take it. So. What I do like, even though the number is small, is I like the under, 41 and a half. Okay. I think that this is a this is a really tough matchup for a rookie making his, yeah. his NFL debut, his NFL starting debut. Todd Bowles, that defense, was, they were embarrassed last Thursday night mm-hmm. by the Falcons and Kirk Cousins, who threw for over five football fields <laughs> against that Tampa <laughs> defense. Uh, from an injury standpoint, you think hopefully the Tampa gets a little healthier from that side. But – I think that that Todd Bowles and those unique blitz packages that he has, I think they're gonna make he's gonna make life hell for Spencer Rattler. On the other side, these these games between the Saints and the Bucks are typically physical. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you remember the uh, the Lattimore and Mike Evans Miami. fights. I mean, they're yeah. always getting into it. These two teams hate each other, yeah. and typically the games have been low scoring. So, for example, the under seven and three over the last ten meetings between these two teams, the under has actually cashed in five straight games between these two teams. Last year, in New Orleans, the Bucs won 26-9. In Tampa Bay, the Saints won 23-13. So the, the games have been relatively close in terms of uh, the spread is concerned, mm-hmm. but they've fallen, they've fallen under more times than not. So give me the, the Bucs, Saints, under 41.5 as my third play. All right, well, I'm going to my fourth one, and I <laughs> – I, my, my – I don't know why I have so much faith in this team. I saw them last week really just shred an opponent, a division opponent, even though they lost. Give me the Cincinnati Bengals, minus three, going into New York. You're choking on chalk this week. I, hey, listen, they are minus three and a half. I think that they are going to blow the Giants out of the water because I don't know if Malik Neighbors is playing. I don't know if Devin uh, um, Singletary is playing. I know Tracy had a good game last week. But I don't know. I, I've watched this Cincinnati Bengals team. Jamar Chase is the real deal. Somebody, I don't know, should pay him. That's just my opinion. <laughs> um, T. Higgins healthy. If they if they can figure, and I, and I love the fact, I mean, maybe I'm a homer again. Chase Brown, I-L-L-I-N-I, playing <laughs> running back. I know Mount Moss went down with a little bit of an ankle injury last week. We'll see how that plays out. But the Cincinnati Bengals, even in a loss, even at one and four, to me, have figured some things out. And Joe Burrow made some great comments after the game. We're not a championship team. Not right now. Yeah. Not the way we're playing. Right. They are not. But they ha- they do have a potent offense. If they can figure some things out, they were playing a, a, a potent offense last week in Baltimore. I don't know that the New York Giants are going to be as deadly as is explosive. So give me the Cincinnati Bengals in New York, Sunday night football, minus three and a half. If I had any huevos rancheros, I'd, I'd throw the All Giants right, on there. Come on, let's uh, do it. But I like I like what you're saying in that, <laughs> you know, if you're if if you're Cincinnati's opponent, you can move the ball against them. Right. The Giants dominated last Sunday in in Seattle. I know they the kick it came down to a, a blocked field goal. Yep. If you watch that game, Seattle Seattle it was a it pushover. Wasn't even close, yeah. It wasn't close. Yeah. The Giants dominated. They did. So to get the three and a half as a home underdog on Sunday night is kind of attractive. But you mentioned, it. I mean, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, the last couple of weeks, really since that Week One performance, that right. dud against New England, that was the worst game. Yeah, but since then, since then they've been they've been fantastic. And, and you could probably put some of that on Jamar Chase, just not being in football shape, not being T Higgins, not being on in the game. Like yeah. there were some things that they didn't have that allowed them to lose that game to the New New England Patriots. Since then, you're correct. They have been flying offensively. they got to figure some things out defensively because it still hasn't been great. But offensively, they are a juggernaut, and they are a team to be be reckoned with. So, Kerry, you fell into the Steelers trap. Like, that's a trap game. I'm going to fall into one myself. This this, This line doesn't make any sense to me. I think it's a trap game, and I'm, I'm probably going to be on the wrong side of it. But I, I'm just going with my football, my my what I'm seeing with my football <laughs> mind. Why Denver is getting three three points at home against the Chargers, I, I don't get. You don't know. I'm going to take the Broncos plus three here. Okay. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they won outright. That defense has been outstanding. Mm-hmm. They, they, haven't, they haven't faced anybody. But if you really look at the way the Chargers have played thus far under John Harbaugh, they want to run the ball. Right. They want to kind of you know play mistake-free football, lean on their defense, and, and win close games. Limit the passing from, from Justin Herbert, which I know you hate. 
I hate because I love Justin. You, you want to see Justin throw the ball 45 I, I times do. a game. I do. I do. But like I understand. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams aren't there anymore. It, that, that's <laughs> just, Quentin Johnson. You and I did not like Quentin think, Johnson well, at all. But I hadn't seen nothing. That, I was that, like, that might have been a worst of, wasted first round he's pick. He's got like 38 touchdowns the first ball. four weeks. He's yeah. been playing ball. But nonetheless, when I look at this Denver team, 30-40-18 last week against the Raiders. They won, They go on the road against the Jets. They win that one 10 9 At Tampa, they blew them out 26-7. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Steelers, they kept it close, and they played Seattle tough, too, in Bo Nix's debut. That's a tough environment right. to play, and, you know, they, they actually covered the spread. The only game they haven't covered it was against your Steelers. It was a small line. It was two and a half. Offense didn't do anything. But since that game, Denver's rattled off three straight wins. I know the Chargers are coming off the bye, but I think that this one, it, these two teams mirror each other, but I'll mm-hmm. take the better defense in Denver, and I'll lean on Sean Payton doing his thing. From an offensive standpoint, give me the Broncos plus three. I have the Chargers winning that game. And I know it's it, it, the Chargers coming off of a bye week. They had a week off. They're going to be wet, rested. They got some time. They had a bunch of players that are questionable. It, it was it was about ten players on the questionable list, whether yeah. or not. But they, I'm sure they'll all be ready to go. I got the Chargers in that game. I think it's going to be a good game, but I think the Chargers are going to get after it. All right, who's your, your fifth now, pick? Now, you, you've been talking crap because you said I've been going all chalk. Yes. Right? Give you me said, a dog. Hey, give me a chalk. Hey, you're going chalk, 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 chalk. This is going to blow your mind because the number for me for an NFL game is outrageous. Uh The Cleveland Browns are plus nine and a half. Yeah. At Philadelphia. Yes. I'm taking the Browns to cover. What? I'm taking the Browns to cover. I told you you were going to think I was out of my mind. Nine and a half in an NFL game. Ten points. That feels like a lot. I know the the, the Philadelphia Eagles have everybody back healthy. Mm -hmm. They got they got Devontae Smith back from a concussion. They got AJ Brown back from a from a hamstring. Lane Johnson back from a from a concussion. They are healthy. They are ready to roll. The defense for the Cleveland Browns is still pretty good. It's the offense that stinks. It's the no, the defense is pretty good. I don't want to get anything the about the Browns. Offense is what hinders you. And here's why. When you stink on offense, you know what the defense has to do? They got to play, play a lot of plays. <laughs> so then they look worse when they're on the field for 70 snaps, 80 snaps. And you're like, these guys stink. Nah, they don't really stink. They just don't have any help on the offensive side because it's a lot of three and outs. You know how frustrating it is for a defensive end to just sit his butt on the bench <laughs> and then have to get back up because the punt team is on the field? What the hell? <laughs> there is oh. anger inside of you when you see that. So give me the Browns to cover the nine and a half. Okay. All right. I like that. I like that play. I don't actually. I, I don't at all. But I do agree. I do agree. Well, if you don't like take the Eagles. No, well, mine is not. No, go ahead. The thing Yeah. The yeah, thing that ahead. you mentioned. Yeah. The thing that you mentioned. Ah, you don't you don't believe it's it that a big, much. It's a big spread. It is. I can't put my picks <laughs> squarely on Deshaun Watson's shoulder pads. I'm sorry. Here, I, I'm going to circle back to a game that you actually talked about before for my last pick. You you talked about the Lions and the Cowboys. Mhm. And I, I, I lean I lean that way with the Lions. There's a lot of home dogs this week. I think I think there's something some we've seen a lot of upsets thus far. Right. And if and the fact that there's a bunch of home dogs this week, I think this this might be a kind of a, a wild week. But the play that the the line, I looked at this and I circled back to it. I'm gonna take it. C D Lamb over six and a half catches. Okay. That's it. I think that's a gimme. I it, Isn't because, it? I feel like it is because who you the got hell one else? guy. You got Jake Ferguson. He can sure. throw it to Brandon Cooks is out with with an infection in his knee, which you is you got Jalen Tolbert. He's yeah. he's fine, right? Turpin, like, but but C D Lamb is the one he's going to be throwing. He probably get fifteen targets. He's going to get fifteen. <laughs> can he catch seven of them? There you go. You know, yeah. so I I actually I was I was shocked. I, I thought about that before. I'm like, well, I kind of always circle C D Lamb, right? But typically it's eight and a half, something yeah. like that. That's a high number. Yep. But six and a half. The Lions secondary, they they think they've they fixed things, mm-hmm. but so far they they haven't looked that great and right. uh, on the back end. Now they got some young guys, so maybe maybe it'll come come to fruition at some point. But I'm gonna take Ceedee Lamb over six and a half. Uh, if you're if you're wondering on Fanduel, it's minus one thirty, so it's not like it's okay. juiced that high. There you go. Uh, so that's that's one of my favorite plays of the week. All right, that's awesome. So 
there. Go so ahead. make sure when you all check us out, enjoy it. Follow us on on our socials, man. Carrie Davis thirty eight, uh, IG and Twitter. Anthony, you are at Anthony Stalter. Pretty make easy. Sure, check us out, man. See what you tell us. What you like. What you don't like. Talk crap to us. Tell us what you would think. <laughs> we would love to hear. It. We will respond. We want to be a part of it. We want you to be a part of it. Yeah. So let us know what you think about our picks this week. It's all supposed to be fun, man. This is this is a way to carry where we're not going through every game. If you don't have an opinion on something like Bears Jaguars in London, like. I don't know. Uh, Maybe I, now, now the yeah. one thing I did think is we just saw a coach get fired after he left London. Oh, good call. <laughs> That's a good call. That did come to my mind when I thought, like, oh, if the Bears beat up on yeah, the Jets. It's a long flight That's home. That's a long <laughs> flight home to be thinking about, you know what? Yeah, I don't want to see another like damn play yep. from this guy called. I don't want to watch it. So I did think about that as a possibility. But that wasn't. that's not a prop bet that I saw. So, I, yeah, yeah really right, it right. It'd be a pretty good prop bet. Uh, just some real quick thoughts here. We'll get to the 20-minute mark. But. Um, I, I I actually think taking the points this week in a lot of these games makes sense. Like even mm-hmm. Carolina plus six, Atlanta's coming off the big win against the Bucks, kind of a letdown spot. Yeah, I could see Car- Atlanta. It doesn't matter if they're playing Carolina, Kansas City, or Lindbergh High School. It's gonna be close. Look at you. It's gonna, gonna be close. But, and they're gonna win more than likely. Go I ahead. think they're gonna win. You're Falcons. You're I'm Falcons fan. Falcons. You're Falcons guy. Plus, I would take the and, six points. And, and put Kirkie it. Cousins going to throw for six hundred yards this week. No, huh? no, yeah. no, no. Let's get to, let's get Bijan going. Huh? Let's do that. That uh, would be awesome. Y- you have the Bengals. I, I think the, I think the Giants at plus three and a half is kind of attractive. I mentioned Denver with the the plus three. There, there's some really big lines. You know, like even New England plus seven against Houston. Houston hasn't been blowing anybody out. Yeah. You know that might that might be tough. That might be a closer game mm-hmm. with Drake May starting. So, anyways. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. As Kerry said, new format. We'll be back on Monday. Yes, indeed. And Monday is going to be similar. We won't be doing predictions at that point, but it's going to be like, you know, the five to ten observations right. that we made from Sunday that really stood out to us, some big-time big, big time moments that we saw on Sunday. And we'll, we'll take a peek at that Bills-Jets game because Kerry and I have been on the opposite side of the Bills all season long. All year long. So, yeah. I'm right. He's wrong. You want to make sure that you get tuned in for that. We'll find out. Uh, well, hey, you know what? The beauty, the beauty of the, the doing the picks and stuff like that is we don't have to do any trash talk. There you go. The, the picks, the picks are going to take care of itself. Mm-hmm. But we'll update you on the first week of the picks. Again, hopefully, like Kerry said, hopefully you enjoyed this one. And we will see you on Monday for the Great, Great Iron Guys podcast as I break the board here, Kerry. <laughs> All right, we'll see everybody.